Ah, oh, well, nobody can say you've not looked after yourself. Never gone to bed once without taking your makeup off and pulling your curlers in. Same weight today as on your wedding day. And that's a plain and sight more you can say for him what you're married. <laughs> oh, I've chucked out jelly moulds with better figures than what he's got. Your mother warned you, though, didn't she? All fellas with Clark Gable tashes is philanderous to a man. You heed them words, Hilda Crabtree. That's what she said. Wed him, she said, and you'll be harnessed to heartaches and pawn shops. All before your time. Ooh, when you think you could have had Sidney Skidmore instead of him what you're stuck with? Dumbing, lying, skiving, conniving, demic. Out every night, air full of shiny grease. Drinking dens full of fallen women falling all over him. <laughs> Ooh, if I was a fallen woman, I wouldn't fall over him with a ten. <coughs> Are you having some early morning, Hilda? Oh, uh, morning. Morning. Very flattering mirrors, these, aren't they? Morning. It's a lovely day. Fresh. Fresh. It's about as fresh as last Friday's fish. It's freezing. <laughs> Nine o'clock. Near enough to eleven, see? Coffee, Wendy? I'll put the kettle on. It's broad blooming daylight when you lot come to work. You're all in your beds when I start. That's when it's freezing. Oh, yes. You know, I often lie in bed and think about your early risers out in the cold, frozen stiff, old before their time. <laughs> Enjoy yourself last night, then? Yes, we had somebody around to supper. Yeah, I know. Did you have a good time? Oh, I think we all did. It was smashing. He seemed at home right away. Hmm. Well, a good time was had by all, then. Hmm. Plus a few, let's not leave it too long before the next time. Smash him. Mr. Piggott, asking Mr. Fairclough for the estimate is one thing, but deliberately rifling through papers and I'm files, not asking non... you to rifle through anything deliberately, but if you are there, then you just might happen to see something accidentally. Accidentally on purpose was the phrase we used at school. In those days, it was a euphemism for deliberately, and it's still a euphemism in the context in which you've just placed it. What did you have for breakfast? A dictionary? Now, look, Miss Nugent, all is fair in love, war, and drumming up a bit of business. I'm not asking you to cut his throat, you know. Aren't you? No, it's sound business practice, and them that don't agree, they went bankrupt without last devaluation but one. So, I'm also being asked to bankrupt Mr Fairclough and Ray as well. Friend Fairclough and his little boy scout will not go bust through losing one contract. Me neither. A quick cry in me beer and then right on to someone else. Well, in that case, why on earth are you so anxious for ah, me to... Ah, ego, love. I love winning. Butchering business, building trade, three-card brag. And I've always shown me gratitude to them that helped me win. Like the well-known hymn says, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. So for the pair of you scratching one another's backs as a sight, I'd go a long, long way to miss. <laughs> well, excuse me, Mr Sharples. I've got a right day on today. It's a right day every day for your sort. One well, of nature's jams is Mrs S. She sees right through me, she does. <laughs> one of a vanishing breed, love. Well, I thought you were about to do something like that. What does he want this time, Mr Port? I pig it. Like a blooming shuttle. In and out, in and out. So it's up, isn't it? In what way? Well, the way you're fiddling about with them snapshots for a start. You've had that one in and out of three different files while I've been here. Would you say the end ever justifies the means, Mrs. Sharples? Oh, I see. Pig it pops into discuss points of philosophy with you. I'm being serious. Oh, I see. All right. Well. I reckon the end can justify the means. But I should want to know what end you were talking about and what means you were using to justify it. Yes. Well, am I going to get the full text? Oh, it's something and nothing, really, Mrs Sharples, but you have been very helpful. Very helpful. Well, how did Bobby actually send it, Mrs Caldwell? Well... I gave him a ping-pong ball for Christmas. He pounces on it, you see, and plays football with his paws right into the arse. Oh, and his tail went right into the fire. Well, normally he's so careful where he puts it. <laughs> he must have got a bit carried away. I just don't know what you'd do for a burnt tail. Oh, perhaps if I were to wrap it up to keep the air off. Oh, well, I think that's as good as anything. Mm. Oh, thank you, Audrey. Well, I'll go and do that right away. Head to our dicky. All right. Mm. Oh. Oh, thank you, love. It's wrong, Mrs Caldwell. You know, that cat gets more affection than most human being. Well, Mrs Caldwell's got nobody close to give affection to, except Bobby. And people need to give affection, you know. Right. 
Talking about affection. No, I've not. I've not apologised to Sandra and I've not said I'm sorry. Well, that crack you made about her only getting raped because he was in a wheelchair was a bit off. Couldn't you have said something yesterday when she called round? She's always calling round. Ray and Sandra are getting married. She only wants to help. Or is it Ray? You've not still got a thing about him, have you? No, I've not still got a thing about Ray. I've got a thing about who runs this house. Well, if she gets under your feet, you can tell her, can't you? Are you in for dinner? I mean, it's just not true, you know, about Ray and Sandra. All right. And the question was, are you in for dinner? I guess something at Jackson's. Look, I'm not the only one who thinks Sandra hooked Ray because he's in a wheelchair. So don't go around thinking it's just me. It doesn't really matter who's saying it, does it? Three guesses. Mrs. Audrey Fleming. Is it one of them? And she's the only one, isn't she? Jack, yeah. would you mind telling me why everybody's whispering? I haven't a clue, love. Would you mind telling me why you are? I find it easier than yodeling. Oh. If there's any truth in it, you can tell me. I mean, I'd rather... Is there? Well, let's face it, kid. Before I became the Dr. Strangelove you see before you, I had what was known as a fantastic female following. I had to fight them off the number of times I've dialed 999 to get away from them. And if you believe one word of that, well, you believe what Audrey said. Just remember, it was me that made the play for you, all right? And don't forget, it was definitely you who was going to get the bevy in, because I'm half dehydrated, kid. Hey, Stan, yeah. I've been thinking. Well, I think it'd be better all round, and for you and me in particular, like, if um, if you was to give up this job. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll soldier on. Yeah, but you're not getting no sleep. I'm not getting no sleep. That's two of us not getting no sleep. Oh, well, it's all right, you see. I've cracked it. I can get as much kip as I want. Huh? <laughs> There's ways around most things, you know. I don't like whispering, and it's very bad mannered when other people are present. Well, if there's no one else present, there's no point in whispering, is there? It is also the language of conspirators and informers, the purveyors of rumour. Oh. You're not a yours sincerely, you're an obedient servant, you know, you're a yours sincerely. And are you both going to sign it? Oh, excuse me, Miss Nugent, I thought it was Mr Fairclough. You should be back by now. Is there anything I can do? Well, I was wondering if I might use the telephone if it's not imposing too much. Oh, help yourself. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, you mean private? I'm sorry. Well, if it's not convenient, order. I mean, if you're typing something important. Oh, it's only that contract thing. I've been typing it for hours. Thank you. Uh, no, there's, uh, there's no message. I'll, I'll ring again later. Thank you very much. Oh, that was a quickie. Oh, uh, out of lunch. I'll perhaps try again later. Yeah. Oh, well, back to the grindstone, nose to the keyboard. Are you happy in your work? Well, I never really think about whether or not I'm happy. I, uh, Hello, Miss Nugent. How's it going with you? Oh, hello, Mr. Fairclough. Oh, we got the estimate worked out, by the way, to be in the post this afternoon. Oh, good. Well, we'll have to keep our fingers crossed now. Hope that the estimate's not too high. I reckon we're spot on. You know, Mrs. Sharples once said to me that a good shepherd always fleeces his sheep. He never flays them. I think our estimate's somewhere between fleecing and flaying. Well, I'd better be on the way, Mr. Fairclough. By the way, it was uh, 12,300. The estimate, 12,300. I thought you might be interested. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Fairfield. What time is Mrs. Walker's appointment? Mm -hmm. 
There we are. Mrs. Klein, Mrs. Sutcliffe, DDT, half past three. DDT? Dowager Duchess time. We have another Mrs. Walker that comes here. Fine, because Duchess treatment is exactly what I want the Mrs. Walker to have. Oh, the Mrs. Walker. You're expecting her to bring in some fresh customer, are you? No, I just don't want her putting a damper on the customer I've already got. I'll just make sure that nobody makes a botch of whatever dish she's coming in for. Trim, shampoo and set. Yeah. Game and match to Mrs. Tanner. By the way, how was the cuisine at Shea Barlow's last night? Look, I thought we agreed we wouldn't live in each other's pockets. Either of us could go our own way whenever we chose, isn't that so? Yeah. All right, then. All right, then. But I really don't see what that has to do with what I've just asked you. Well, it's about Stanley Ogden. Stanley? Me? Oh, uh, I'm just a well-wisher. No, I'd rather be an anonymous well-wisher. Yeah, well, it's just to let you know that your night watchman, Stanley Ogden, is spending his nights getting boosted up to the eyeballs and having kips. Kips! Okay? Sleeping. Yeah. That's what's wrong with the world these days, you know. Nobody wants to do a fair day's work, I mean, a fair night's work for a fair night's pay. You are. You'll take stringent measures if it's true. Oh, it's true, all right. You'll find out. It, right. Yeah, thank you very much. Eh? No. No, like I said, said I prefer to remain anonymous. <laughs> Thirty seconds. Coronation Street, P228, stroke 951, part two, take one. The man who came to dinner. Vaguely. Yeah, well, he's come to lunch as well. Bearing a bottle of Chateau Bessie Street off license Bordeaux. Probably bottled yesterday. Well, in this house, mate, that's the best vintage there is. You've got a, an extra plate for Alan, have you? Oh, well, I think so. It's only meat and potato hash. You sure it's all right? Well, it should be. It's been in the oven all morning. Oh, she's fast, you know, when she gets her repartee rockets launched. Can you lay a table? Yeah, can he open a bottle of wine? I lay the table. <laughs> Uh, your boss has just been on the phone, wants to see you urgent. On the phone? Well, here. Are you having me on? Cross your heart and... I'll cross out. He's waiting for you to ring back. Eh? Can I use your phone? Oh, go and help yourself. Please don't think I'm getting a complex. And correct me if I'm mistaken. But that is Miss Nugent over there with Mr Pickett. Whispering, isn't it? Whispering? They're all talking about you behind your back, Nanny. You do understand that I've only done this for Mr. Bishop and Mrs. Sharples, don't you? And I expect you to honour your part of the arrangement. Well, what did I tell you? Scratch my back and Or, I'll... as the motto of the Stock Exchange says, my word is my bond. Aye, that's me, all right. You know, I wish I had a woman like you behind me. Somebody with a bit of polish on that, eh? <laughs> Hey, 12 grand, you said, didn't you? 12 grand and three C's. <laughs> hey, did you ever see Jimmy Cagney in Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye? Or how about Bogart? San Quentin, The Big Shot, Casablanca, George Raft, or Edward G, eh? Hey? Oh, they knew how to make films in them days, you know. <laughs> ah, well. If they've slapped in 12,003, I could shave mine down to uh, about 11,900. And that'll clinch the contract easy enough. Well, I am in your debt, Miss Nugent, but don't worry, I'll be in touch from time to time. Less frequently, I hope. <laughs> Honey, as far as young girls go, you won the raffle, boy. Miss Nugent, smart as be damned is that one. <laughs> 
Hey, he wants to be around there right away. Chief Spear Carry, you know, Ed Lad himself. Maybe he's recognised my potential. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, I'll jack your tanner on the phone call. Oh, right. Of course, it might be another firm with a better job offer. They, uh, must think a lot of you at that place, Stan. I didn't get too short planks when they got me. Of course, it's the law of life, you know. Talent will out, eventually. Well, it's just a suggestion, Mrs Walker, but I think a protein shampoo might be a good idea. Oh. And why would you suggest that, Sandra? Well, uh, you have got rather fine hair, and I think a protein shampoo's... For... How long have you been a hairdresser, Sandra? <laughs> or rather, how long have you been working as a hairdresser? Well, uh, it must be going on for three years now. Yes, well, over a long period, dear, considerably longer than your three years, I have been to many hairdressers in many parts of the world. Paris, Babacoom, Eastbourne, Old Colwyn, and Falma, Mallorca. And the texture of my hair has never been described as fine. Yes, well, I said it was just a suggestion, Mrs Walker. You are the uh, junior assistant, I take it. Yes, but I'm ageing quickly. I must confess that I did expect to be attended by the senior hairdresser. Well, Hi. Is... Hi. Oh, hello, Dickie. I was, um, I was wondering if you'd like to come round for your tea tonight. That's great. What time about? Well, just as soon as you're through here. Yes, which might be rather late if we have any more interruptions. When you're ready, Sandra. I have been ready now for some time. <coughs> know thyself. That's what Plato reckoned you ought to be able to do. Well, I don't mind telling you that what I know about myself is that I've got me limitations. In fact, far too many limitations all round. Your limitations, lad, don't hurt anybody. Not even yourself. No, it's fellas like Piggy that hurt everybody around and all us end up by being hurt themselves worst of all. It strikes me the piggots of this world are the ones that get the most of it and the best. The sin folk do by two and two, they must pay for one by one. It's as true today as ever it was. And that goes for Piggott and probably the whole of this so-called permissive society sooner or later. You're flying in the face of the facts, Mrs Sharples. I'm not interested in facts, lad. You can't eat them and they do not for your soul. You see, in my lifetime, I have been witness to the virtual rejection of the Word of God. I've even lived long enough to see educated men on television seriously supporting sin of one sort or another. Sin in the eyes of our Lord. Perhaps. And what have they traded him in for? Films and books full of four-letter words and folk with no clothes on. Drugs for dropping out when they get world weary at 19 and 20 years of age. Selfishness like getting rid of babies if they're a bit inconvenient. Or selfishness by putting parents into old folks' homes. And finally, we've got hopelessness in place of faith. Not sure I can accept that, Mrs Sharples. Well, I've not heard much hope expressed for man's future. Not with man's pollution, man's chemical warfare, and man's hydrogen bombs. Mm. One man's limitation may be another man's limitless pastures. Well, take them files, for example. Emily has imposed order on chaos. You're convinced she's about to work for Piggott, aren't you? Well, what do you think's going on? I don't know. I've tried asking. I think it's time you tried. Just the merest mist of lacquer, please. Auntie Elsie bought that. Uh, I don't know much about the practicalities of hairdressing, Mrs Walker, but uh, it seems that this particular lacquer contains a tint. It could affect your hair if ever it's been bleached any time. Bleached? Whatever gave you that idea? My hair has been exactly this colour since I was a tiny girl. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sure it's all right then. <laughs> What effect would it have had uh, if my hair had been bleached? It could turn it green, Mrs Walker. I see. Oh, well, <laughs> perhaps we'd better be on the safe side and forego the lacquer, having already foregone one or two other things. Uh, my bill, please. At least the bill is prompt. Well, it's considerably less than... What does it say there? Uh. Reduced rates apply to clients who have retirement age and over. Please present your pension book to the receptionist when making it. Oh. Perhaps 
in your eyes, Sandra, my years of too fair to love, too divine to worship, are well and truly behind me. But I do assure you, I do not qualify for your reduced rates. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Walker. I, Just I, go I, and get the right bill, Sandra. I'm sorry, Mrs. Walker, but well, she's reached the age now. She's very anxious to be off at promptly at five o'clock. Well, I think you look very nice, Mrs. Walker. Do you like it? Like the curate's egg, Mr. Howard? In pots. And I'll thank you not to dish out invitations to tea again. Not without asking me first. Sorry. We'll have to get an extra when we have guests. Sandra is not a guest. From now on, Sandra's going to be a guest. Do you know <coughs> what I'm going to miss when I get out of this wheelchair? Mini skirts. You get a fantastic view from down here. Hello, Audrey. Ray. Hello, Sandra. Hello. Uh, you wouldn't like to give me a hand, would you? I've got something to say to you about what I said about you and Ray. I shouldn't have said it, Sandra. It's all right. It is now. It's more than all right. Friends with me again. Friends. Well, I've been, I've been sacked a few times. I've been laid off, you know, but I've never been suspended before. Suspended? For oh. how long? One night. One night? Oh. You know, Jack, I've been shocked. Never. Some snotty nose snooper has shot me, I'll tell you. I thought we only had snoopers in our trade. Hey, I can't stomach folk like that. I'm going to ferret this one out. I've still got 14 stone of fighting flesh left. Well, why would I want to leave? Better prospects. But I've helped to build this business up. My present prospects are very good. Yes, but when I offered you that partnership, well, you didn't exactly give the impression of being overly excited, pleased even. Well, if it's still on offer, and if you don't mind a verbal acceptance for the time being. Partner? Partner. Oh, Emily. Oh, honestly, you know, I thought you and Piggott were... I mean, I really thought you were going off to work <laughs> for him, you know. Everyone a loser. He had a personal problem and he... Well, he, he appealed to me to, to help. Bootkeeping. Anyway, it's, it's, it's done now. <laughs> I'll have a large scotch, please, Mr. Walker. There's no to touch a good whiskey. Agreed. Ah, oh, well, my pocket's not that deep, you know. I'll take your word for it, Mr. Piggott. Hey, give this lad a double whiskey and all while you're at it, Mr. Walker. Sum up for yourself. Uh, half a glass of bit will do for me, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Piggott. Oh. Well, it's not as drafty in here tonight. Probably because Fairclough's not in. <laughs> the wind when he opens his mouth these days. Oh, well, he's very happy, you see, at the moment, because him and Langton have got a contract uh, for a new uh, university. Hey, the contract is to put the plumbing in one of the buildings, and they haven't definitely got it either. I've just posted off my own tender. Same job. Oh, so it's between the two of you, eh? No, there'll be half a dozen in for it, but uh, all the same. I'll get it. I'll bet out on that. Cheers. I could do with some decent brochures. You know the sort of thing I mean, don't you? If you don't, that's the sort of thing I don't mean. Mm -hmm. Oh, you need some photogravure stuff. You know, uh, glossy paper, crisp print, clear pics. I've done quite a few in my time. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, now the trouble with uh, Emily and me is that she is and I'm not. <laughs> Emily, when you a minute. That's a very polite way of saying right now. <laughs> oh, Emily, could you find Mr. Fairclough some examples of our photogravure work? You know, brochures, that sort of thing. Yes, of course. I've had a bit of good luck since I saw you last, love. I've got a load of bankrupt stock this afternoon. Ooh. About 80% of it is plumbing stuff. That sounds all right, Mr. Fairclough. You wouldn't chuckle, love. Brings the estimate down to 11,700. 600 quid down. That's more like it. That's the kind of thing I'm looking for. Look at the layout on that page. 